Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, hello there. This is Clyde J. Cal, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 104 for July the 5th, 2021. And I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And say hi to everybody, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Okay, Constance. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. For our listeners, if you want to go to www.talkartpodcast.com. I think I had an extra W in there. That's it. <laughs> Talkartpodcast.com. There's a recommended video links. And for this week, uh, we're just going to talk about art. We might talk about some of the videos because it would give us something to, to kind of talk about. And, um, but, uh, just thought we would, you know, this art, artist life, the last, I think the last two, maybe the last three podcasts, I would listen to them. We were, we were really kind of preachy. I was on a high horse. So we're going to kind of just be relaxed and just kind of chatter, you know, about our art. And it may, it may, it may end up being a long podcast and may end up being a short one. Who knows? If we have too many moments of silence, we'll have to cut it off. <laughs> So, since you both commented, Constance had some interesting comments to make about the uh, when she was living in uh, Florida. Uh, Raffi and Clee are two favorites, and I like it when they say Raffi and Clee. <laughs> They're a cute couple. Two, they really are. Two ca- and two characters, and uh, they were talking about you know the uh, kind of what kind of art sells, and or what kind of art should you paint. Yeah, what kind if you're of living in a certain area? Oh. What kind of art sells, or what should you paint? Really, yeah. you should just paint what you want to paint, or what you like to paint. Sure. But when you're living on the go in the Gulf Coast, which I lived there for 15 years, and everybody used to tell me, "Well, why don't you paint beach scenes?" <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I never saw the beach scene while I was living there. I did like to paint them because I like the beach, so I painted some. But I never, I sold them. I sold one to somebody in Canada, but that was because I posted it on eBay. <laughs> I didn't sell them to anybody there. But, um, you know, I don't. I think you should just paint what you like to paint and people will respond to it, you know, so. That's what it comes down to. Diane, what's your thoughts about that? You try to paint to the market? <laughs> no, I paint what I would like to paint, but I, 
I, mean, I do beach scenes, but, <laughs> but that's only because I like the beach. But yeah. um, around here, it's like everybody's into hunting and fishing and stuff. So people want you to paint um, like geese and, you know, ducks and <laughs> things like that. And I, I don't paint that kind of stuff at all. So it's, yeah, I mean, I've been happy. I've had people tell me that too, like certain things or paint. I should paint hunting scenes or like, you know, them in the in the blinds hunting the geese or whatever, but that's not really what I'm into. So it's yeah. <laughs> you gotta do to to uh, uh maybe uh get some of those people to uh stop one. You have got to paint a scene of a hunter holding a gun up but then showing what the duck or geese looks like when the bullets hit it. Oh, they would love that. <laughs> they they would. would love that. They do like it. Where that, <laughs> but you got to make it gross. You got to make it really bloody. You know? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, they like on Facebook and stuff, people post pictures of their dead deer and you know, it's like all this. <laughs> yeah. They like to, they're actually, they, after they part them. of the life here, it's, yeah, after they kill a deer, they like to throw it on the hood of their car and drive around town with it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> they got it and then throw it on the hood and drive it around like their big trophy for a while. Oh, yeah, I know all about that that uh, scene because I lived in, yeah, you know, out in the country, you know. So, right. yeah. An old Far Side cartoon that I saw, it showed a man strapped to the hood of a car and it was deers driving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, oh brother yeah i i'm kind of like in the same situation i think i've said this before you know i living here in oklahoma i'm not from here originally but you know i've been living here for 20 some years and everybody you know i get requests hey why don't you paint some western art why don't you paint some cowboys paint some indians buffaloes and and cattle and uh, my eyes just kind of glazed over. I did give in. I did paint a, a uh, I've done a couple buffalo, you know, uh, paintings, but um, I haven't sold any, though. They say, yeah, I want you to do it, but then they don't, you know. I did that one buffalo, and, and I even entered in a contest, and I won an award, but nobody bought it. So nobody even bought a print. So it's like, okay, why should, you know, I'm going to go back to painting what I want. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like doing plain air and I, you know, we've got this 36 acre place out here, but, and I like to do plain air. So I have done plain air paintings from around the, the ranch here, but um, I haven't really tried to sell them too much, but I just like doing them, you know, and they're not very indicative of, you know, I try not to make them look too gitchy, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I like to do some sunsets and sunrises and they're, you know, I like, I like the cows, but I haven't done a lot of cow paintings. I don't, I don't know. I just haven't uh, tackled it yet. No. That seems to be a big thing too around here. A lot of people like <laughs> people like to, the paintings of the cows, but yeah, with the big I was going to get into doing some more paintings of the cows, but, um, I've been kind of under the weather for the last 10 months, but uh, hopefully I'm on a uphill of getting out of being under the weather. <laughs> yeah. So good. I got to get back yeah, into it. I mean, I, I paint, you know, the landscape and stuff around here and a lot of it's, you know, water scenes or whatever, but because everything's, there's water everywhere around here. Um, yeah, where you are, yeah. Stuff in the Chesapeake Bay, but um I'm not really into painting the birds. Like that's what the birds yeah. or the, you know, the deer, <laughs> like close-ups and stuff. It's, I mean, I could do it, I guess, but there's, you know, what? Been... I've said this before and I, you have a golden opportunity to make some money there. Okay. You, Cause you have your kennel. Why don't you mm -hmm. paint pet portraits? I mean, <laughs> you could, I, you painted some I do some. I just some, you know, some of your I did. Dance. I painted pet portraits for a while <laughs> and I don't know. I don't really know a lot of people out here where I am now and I haven't done any pet portraits for myself for a while either. So um no, I do them I do them every so often, but I don't. It's not like one of my She runs a kennel. She's got she's got a <laughs> she does have 
<laughs> she's got an opportunity. Yeah. But people have to want it, you know, and that has to be something you want to do. If you're not into it, it can get old really fast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It yeah, can. I, wouldn't mind. I don't mind doing them every now and then, but it's not really my thing, I guess. Yeah. I mean, if you enjoy doing landscapes, then that's what you enjoy doing. It's, it's like they say, you have to do what you enjoy doing. Otherwise, then it becomes really a bad job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of animals in the past. And I I can see maybe sometime going back to that at some point. But right now, that's not where my interest is. So that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> She's not painting for the market. She's painting <laughs> for heart. And well, that's really what you got to do, you know, because. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, it, it gets old and stale after a while, and, and then people quit buying, and you, and you get upset, and, you know. So, yeah. And you can get into a routine, too, the same old routine, same old thing, painting the same old, you know. And I mean, I, I'm such a, uh, a stickler on that that I don't even paint because, you know, all the, uh, so the marketing experts – and the, you know, artists that, you know, ex the, how to sell your art experts, they all say, you know, you should paint in a series and have a, you know, the same, uh, uh, basically multiple uh, uh, subjects. Uh, you know, there for a long time, I didn't realize you were supposed to even paint in a series. I thought you were just supposed to do something different all the time, you know. But I guess that's what you get for not getting a art a art uh what do you call it education you know i just went and learned how to paint from different people and you know. but you can that's an easy way to get burnout too you know and it was so uh you know i, I don't want to get known for painting something you know all the time a certain way all the time like a, in a certain pattern or because there's like some artists, abstract artists who just use the same pattern but use different colors all the time. I don't want to get known for something like that. Yeah. You know? Yep, exactly. I mean, when I was in, living on the Gulf, I painted some seascapes and stuff, but I used, you know, I, but I always, I don't know. But I want to tell you another way you can make some money. Create invisible paintings and invisible <laughs> yeah, or they use sculptures. That was sculptures. It was an invisible sculpture. Yeah, was I, it? It was paintings. He held up his invisible painting. He said, "You can't see this, but this is a thirty by forty inch invisible painting, and I'm selling it for five thousand dollars." He made a good story behind. It was a sculpture, <laughs> and there was a square tape on the ground that said, "Do not walk across the sculpture because it's here," and they had an auction and sold it. It yeah. was a very good story. Eighteen thousand dollars. I don't understand how that can happen. Like I don't. It does, who but you know that guy ought to be smiling all the way to the bank. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's like I don't know. It's just bizarre. I don't keep up. Kind of like the banana tape to the wall. Kind mm -hmm. of thing. Exactly. <laughs> or the urinal on the wall. <laughs> Yeah, for our listeners that, that uh, don't keep up with the art market, what's going on, what we're referring to was an Italian artist um, recently made what he called an invisible sculpture. And it was in a gallery, sold it for $18,000. And Kathy and Clee gave, a, gave a, a, a nice little video about the whole concept about how that was they talked they gave a good talk on it yeah it's, it's in the the it was well worth the watch on it yes i i enjoyed it it's for our listeners it's in the uh www.talkartpodcast.com talk art I'm on the wrong, on the wrong page there it is eighteen thousand dollar sculpture <laughs> they had some interesting comments about it you know so when are we going to do some invisible paintings our, <laughs> I've already done mine. <laughs> it's all done. Okay. How much? Is <laughs> I have several over here. <laughs> oh my gosh! But I have discovered that I've been putting the wrong kind of gesso under my invisible oil painting. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and get the right kind of gesso to put under them. Okay. I've been using acrylic, 
But uh, some of them I've been using rabbit skin glue and the marble dust to put under them. Okay. So those are okay. But the others aren't. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, yeah, we're getting, we're getting crazy, people. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the emperor that has no clothes. Yeah. <laughs> he said, they said that he has, he is de a de definite, a definite, what is, I broke it, broke this down. I can't spell very well. So my notes are sometimes very <laughs> broken for myself. Anyway, it, he was selling a story of, for his sculpture more so than anything else. And that's what actually got the, um, sale I have to think out of the box he came up with a really really you know really good story yeah really you can't blame the artist other than the fact hey, <laughs> he did a good job he made eighteen thousand dollars for his he's, wonderful like Raffi said he, he's he's a little, he's lazy because he's only sold like three of them so far you know he's hey like, <laughs> yeah i mean hey but he I mean, the man should give an award for the greatest con job in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, <sighs> I love because they also said that they took his picture and he was not smiling. He had a very serious look on his face. And then we should all not be smiling in our photographs because later on, that when they look at us, if we have a smile on our face, they're going to think we're fools. <laughs> <laughs> Because we were, or how do they put it? Either only drunks and fools laugh when they're having their pictures taken. <laughs> I didn't know that the people thought that about people when they take your picture and you're smiling. I want to see you two post some of the like a uh, picture like what I've seen some of them on Instagram, where some of those uh, young artists that are posed against their paintings, and it makes you wonder what are they selling. It's sure. <laughs> I ain't looking at the painting. <laughs> They're very scant scantily clad. <laughs> Listen, I'm 70 years old. I am too old for that. Maybe when I was 20, <laughs> I could have gotten away with it, but no, not now. <laughs> Nobody wants to see this scantily clothed. <laughs> Boy, Photoshop your face onto, you know, you find a picture of a babe and then you just Photoshop your face on. <laughs> Still, you look at this hair, there's no way I can Photoshop anything with this hair and make myself look that young. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. I mean, the crap. I'm going through Instagram, you know, and I'm looking at these. And I said, come on, la ladies. I mean, are you, you're supposed to be selling your art, not yourself. You know, <laughs> you know what? That, that, if it works for them, by golly. No, it's called, it, well, it's called. It's what they call clickbait, you know. They're just, they're it was called what? Clickbait. They're just getting the likes. Oh, clickbait. <laughs> yeah, they're just, they're just, you know, getting people to click on it, you know, like, you know. But that ain't going to sell the art. <laughs> I mean, I would really, I would really like to to know just how much art they sell because I, I don't think they sell. They probably get all kinds of propositions, but I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they're not selling the art. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Like I, you know, I told that to my daughter one time. She said, oh, "Why don't you do that?" I said, "Yeah, right." <laughs> wants to see that middle aged, you know, gray. And <laughs> I said, I'm, Never know. <laughs> I'm too old to even be a cougar. <laughs> I said, I think what they, if they did buy, the, you know, see the pictures, they would use it to scare the, the mice away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay that if we don't have anything else to talk about <laughs> i think we'll end the episode with that like i said this would be a short episode so you have been listening to the artist friends podcast episode 104 for july the 5th 2021 and my name is clyde J. Kell, and i've been talking with diane hunt and constance bronson and it's just been the it's been chatter, invisible sculptures, and my pornographic art images, and and painting for the market. I think that was the subject matter. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to say bye to Diane and Constance. 
Likewise. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. And thanks for listening. I second that. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And hey, give us give us a thumbs up, a star rating, however you find our podcast. We really appreciate it. Y'all come back again. Bye until next week. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.